everyone. Bear Bets Podcast is back. Super Bowl week is upon us. More specifically, NFL honors and awards will be uh, handed out tonight. I'm your host, Bear Chris Feliga. Jeff Schwartz is with me here in Los Angeles. Seasons, uh, seasons wrapping up here, my friend. Pretty, pretty it is, uh, I know. Pretty quickly. Yeah. Before before we know it, we'll be on to uh, NCAA tournament, Masters, Triple Crown, baseball preview. We'll, we'll have some stuff for you throughout the year. But before we move on, we don't, don't want to slam the door on football season just yet. We got one last gambling group chat, one last episode with uh, with Sammy P and Will Hilder on football season. Uh, Unfortunately, we can't bet this stuff anymore, and we haven't been able to bet it for a while. But like, like, like I said, NFL honors and awards are uh, are handed out tonight. Um, so I, I guess the way we'll just handle this is kind of recap, just kind of stuff that we bet during the course of the year. And if we were able to to, to bet this now, like who do we bet, who do who do we think will ultimately win? So I, I guess I'll start it off with uh, with, with MVP. Uh, I mean, I think we're all kind of in agreement that Lamar will win the award, uh, even though his quarterback numbers weren't the best uh, of any of the quarterback. But he won that big game uh, against uh, Brock Purdy and McCaffrey and the 49ers on Christmas night. And I think, um, Will, we are all in agreement that uh, if the Niners would have won that game, our Brock Purdy bets at 20 to 1 or whatever they were would have been uh, really, really good. And we'd be, we'd be very, very excited right now. But the Niners did not win that game. Purdy threw four picks that night. I think it was four. Right? I lost count at some point. I didn't even watch the end of the game. So it could have been a lot more than four. Who the, who the hell knows? But uh, uh, are, are we in agreement here that, that, that Lamar is going to be the guy? Will? I thought this was the group chat. This isn't group therapy. I don't want, I don't need to go over the fact that I bet Purdy 22 to one and I was minus 200 and I could have hedged and all this different stuff. Yes. Lamar is going to win. Uh, we know who's going to win a lot of these. Keep in mind it is human beings. So we can make odds for this stuff and we never know exactly what these voters are thinking, but some of these are pretty straightforward, but Lamar is going to win his second MVP in five years. Going to be a little awkward. He didn't play very well in the AFC title game. I know we haven't really talked about that game since we didn't have a podcast after the one. So that was a bad look, uh, the way he played to, to go up there and accept this award. I mean, Mahomes is obviously the better player, but that's not what this is. This isn't the better player award. So, yes, Lamar is going to be the MVP. And, and, and Sammy, I, 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 I said Lamar is going to win it. So, but if I, if I had a vote and I think we were truly voting on the player that was most valuable to, to his team, I think Terry Kill yes. was the most valuable player in the league. We, we saw how the offense went, the Dolphins' offense went absolute garbage and how they closed the year without him healthy uh, at the end of the regular season. Like, like, I think if we were voting in the true spirit and what MVP is, I think Terry Kill was the MVP, Sammy. That's why I haven't lit my ticket on fire yet, 125 to 1. I don't think it's going to win, so eventually I will. Well, maybe I won't light it on fire. I'll just keep it in the envelope of losing slips. Uh, for tax purposes, wink, wink, um, <laughs> we all know that he was going to get 2,000 yards if healthy, but he rolled his ankle on that Monday night against the Titans, and it sucks because I, I feel somewhat responsible for that. I had written a story about making the case for, for Hill three days earlier. And I feel responsible that he rolled his ankle, but it's their offense you. went to hell. He got hurt. And, you know, it's funny too, Bear, because remember halfway through the season, Tua was the second or third favorite. Yeah. And then we saw what Tua is when Hill got hurt. So I argued that Hill was even more valuable after he got hurt because we saw the inability of their offense to do basically anything. Thought it was a good bet. It's not going to win. Jackson has everything he needs. He's the quarterback on a number one seed. That's happened seven straight years now. But as we know, Jeff, Lamar Jackson, very lucky. This is a regular season yeah. award and not a full picture award because watching him against Mahomes yeah. in that AFC championship game, you're like, all right, he can have the MVP, but he is not the most important player. Well, look, the MVP discussion is not about value, right? It ends up being the best quarterback on the number one seed, as Sam mentioned, or running back who has 2,000 yards or has 40 all-purpose touchdowns. Like That tends to be what the award has become. And look, Lamar was or will be deserving of this award, I should say. 
But also, look, if the Bills are not 6-6 six and six after 12 games, Josh Allen's probably in a discussion for this award a little bit more than he is. If Brock Purdy wasn't the, the, the Mr. Irrelevant, he's probably a little bit higher in the voting of this award. That, that all matters, right? Bears mentioned many times that humans are voting for this award, right? So, you know, your, your draft slot, your previous contributions to the NFL matter a lot. Lamar has won an MVP before. If Mahomes' wide receivers catch the football at a higher rate, Mahomes is probably much higher in this discussion as far as who the MVP is. So it's not a year where I feel like a lot of people will be satisfied. Obviously, look, Lamar deserves the award. He, he will win the MVP. I think we're all on board with him winning the MVP this year. But I think it feels like, you know, there were there were other guys that were in the discussion a little bit more than we've seen with Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady over the years. Uh, you know, even Cam Newton, the year that he won, I mean, it's very clearly Cam Newton was the MVP that season. Lamar won at the end, but did he win because he won or because other people kind of dropped off as the season went along? Yeah, I, I, I think it was a, a, a little bit of each of of each there. Uh, another area where Tyree Kill could have won was Offensive Player of the Year, but I think that injury at the end of the regular season probably puts Christian McCaffrey as the. Uh, I mean, it, it, I don't think he was a slam dunk odds price wise, if I remember correctly. But 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 I I think Sammy that. I think we could both can agree that, that CMC will ultimately wind up winning Offensive Player of the Year here. Yeah, he had over 2,000 yards in scrimmage, 21 total touchdowns. They used him perfectly this year, and and he was their horse on offense, and a very loaded offense. I will say, though, I don't think this guy gets enough credit. Will, C.D. Lamb had over 120 yeah. receptions and had almost 1,800 yards or something like that. I don't have his numbers in front of me, but he was – very good through 16 games. And, you know, it was, it was a fun watch between McCaffrey and Hill and C.D. Lamb, but I, I think they gave it to McCaffrey. Yep, all good points. And, Bear, if Aaron Rodgers could have ever come back, we're still waiting for that comeback. <laughs> he could have been in the mix, but he just – I'm not ready to rule him out for coming back for this past season, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So yeah, close, though. Yeah, I, 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 thought, I thought week 17 against the uh, the, the commanders when when, uh, when when the Jets were looking to come back there, I, I thought there was a chance he could have uh, – come back in there and uh, not only one offensive player of the year, but maybe, maybe comeback player of the year. And I think this is, if more there was a, by the way, if there's an award for dumbest story of the year, how much time did everyone waste on that? That, that there should be an award for dumbest much. story of the year. That one wins unanimously too much. I was going to go DPOY, but being that you, you we, we kind of joked about comeback player of the year. This is, I think we'll, we'll get back to DPOY before that. We're not going to go out of order here, but like, like this is one that I think there is a genuine debate. Uh, we all, I, I was on board before the year started with DeMar Hamlin. If he, if he sips, takes a step onto the field and plays a down or but plays one special teams play, like he makes the team, he's, he's comeback player of the year. He, he, he died on the field last, last year. They resuscitated him, and he's, he's come back. He made the roster, and he played. But there is a, there is a but. You had a story in Cleveland with Joel Flacco who – Took this team to the playoffs. He was the fourth quarterback that they he took him off the, off the couch. Uh, they want were they eleven and six? I think this year is what the, what they were. I think so. Eleven like uh, made the playoffs. He was throwing for three hundred yards a game. It seemed like every week. Yeah, he had a propensity to turn the ball over, but but they Sean got hurt. Uh, DTR got was benched. Uh, PJ Walker, like like he made the Browns offense go. And I know we talked about it. We got some big, big numbers on Flacco. But again, this is going to be the debate. And, and Jeff, you're you're Mr. Ego, angry, talking down to people and, and all that all the time, <laughs> like, like like you've done today. Like, would you be the guy that would not have DeMar Hamlin on? He, he, I guess here's the thing. If well, or would you be concerned about the public perception that the you the humanitarian type factor involved in this uh, element involved in this where maybe on the football field Joe Flacco was yeah. the comeback player of the year and his performance performance was very worthy of winning comeback player of the year and I and I hope he wins at 100 to 1 believe me but would you want to be the guy that Damar Hamlin, the story, and yeah. everything that we know, and you're not going to be the guy to have him on your ballot. So I, I, I think Will has said this like four times this year. He's, he has a checklist for this award. He goes, did you die on the field? <laughs> yes. Did you come back? Yes. And, like, that's the checklist for this award. Like, this, it's comeback player of the year. Look, I, I'm sort of against the idea that comeback player of the year is, like, you 
weren't on the roster or you didn't play well for seven years and finally played well one year. Like to me, and I was often injured. So I, 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 I come back part of the year to me is guys hurt. Guy, unfortunately, has a cardiac arrest in the field. Did he come back from that injury? Yeah, DeMar Hamlin did not play a lot this season. More of a special teams player than an actual starter on their defense. But part of that was their all pro safeties were healthy this season, right? And he's not as good as Hyde or Poyer. So he didn't play as much. Um, the Flacco story is absolutely great. But he wasn't even on a roster till November. I mean, like, what's he coming back from? Being well, on the couch? Like, well, like, I, I, to me, no, that, to he's me, coming back like, from playing for the Jets. Like, the <laughs> fair enough. But to me, Will, like, comeback player of the year but, is about. Injury, like you're coming back from an injury, not coming back from being on the couch. With I'm the kids. jumping in on this right now before it gets to you, Will, because you're going to say it, and I'm going to say it before you. Like this goes back to last year when I'm pissed off that yeah, Geno, Geno Smith. I, I you, what did Geno correct. Smith play? Wait, wait, Nick that's my Gates, point. Nick, Nick I don't Gates think... was comeback player of the year last year. Well, Nick Gates, you know, an offensive lineman, is not going to win the award. But he was but, hurt. But my, my point is, like, is, I just think like it's always been mostly, mostly about guy gets hurt, guy comes back, come back from injury. Not come back from being on the couch, not come back from not playing for seven seasons. Will, I know you've been on DeMar Hamlin this entire I have a DeMar Hamlin wager. I think it's like minus 280. But I, I think he's going to win the award, and he should. Yeah, I think Hamlin's going to win. And I, it's such a vague award. Even the voters, like, I don't really know what I'm voting on. There's no really criteria. I think it's always sort of been misnamed as best comeback. It's really what's the best story, what's the best redemption story. And in a lot of years, Flacco would win. A lot of years, hell, Baker Mayfield would win. Number one pick, yeah. bounced around, led his team to win a division. I just think what Bear said, people are too, you know, they don't want to be insensitive. They want to vote for Hamlin. Hamlin's obviously a great story. There are two great stories. There are two deserving winners. Only one of them can win, obviously. I think we've heard some voters say on the record, hey, I'm going to vote for Hamlin for all the reasons we mentioned. So I think Flacco will get some support. I do think Hamlin wins probably a close vote, though. I love Will's checklist. I had forgotten about that. <laughs> I mean, nailed it. Um, I've always viewed comeback player of the year as which story would make, would make the best movie. And that's Damar Hamlin. I mean, it, it just is at this point in time. And remember, we saw this bear in 2020. We've discussed this on your show when Alex Smith almost lost his life to that leg injury and all the surgeries. Roethlisberger played two games the year before, screwed his entire right arm up. The elbow was like ready to come off at the seams he comes back the next year, throws for 33 touchdowns. The Steelers started 10-0, and 0, and it, it didn't matter. Alex Smith won that award running away. Did DeMar Hamlin do anything to help the Bills this year? No. Five games he played in. He had two tackles. He was on the field. He was the 12th man on the field in the game they lost. But none of that matters. None of that. It's not about stats. It's about the story, and DeMar Hamlin's going to win, period. Speaking of stats... Back, circling back to defensive player of the year now. This is one that, like, I have Miles Garrett. I bet Miles Garrett before the year, and I think he is going to win. But I wonder if we maybe did not pay enough attention to, and you mentioned uh, C.D. Lamb not paying on, maybe not paying much attention to him, offensive player of the year. Like, should T.J. Watt and, and Max Crosby may have gotten a little bit more run for this work? Because it seems like all year long, Jeff, it was either going to be it was either going to be Parsons or it was going to be Garrett, and like it was. Yeah. But like you look at what Watt and Crosby did this this I, year, I, like. Oh, I, I don't think you're going to cash that ticket, buddy. You don't think Miles Garrett's going to win? He had one sacker for his last seven games. He's not winning. I don't think he's going to win this award. So is Michael Parsons going to win? I think it's Watt's going to win the award. He had nineteen nineteen sacks last season, and or this season. He closes the third choice and and thirty six quarterback hits. Watt closes the third choice. I think Watt's going to win. I mean, look, Garrett was maybe the best player in the NFL for the first two months of the season. That didn't hurt his shoulder. I mean, I don't know how you give defensive player of the year to a player that had one sack. Again, sacks are on everything, obviously. You can tally pressures and hits, but he was not the same player he got after he got hurt, and that's part of sports, right? He got hurt, wasn't the same guy. Will, Sammy, it'd be tough for me to to give him that award when you have one sack over your last seven games. Yeah, this is one market I didn't get involved in. I, I would assume Garrett's going to win, but I, I really, honestly hadn't heard that stat about only one sack in the last seven games. Bear, what did this market close at? It, it closed. Garrett was fa- – I don't have the exact numbers, but I know Garrett was favored. Micah Parsons was second choice, and T.J. Watt was – last last I saw T.J. Watt, because remember – 
he had the uh, he had the concussion that 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 game the Monday night game I think it was I, he was around four to one four and a half to one last time I checked because like, like you had the narrative it was like after they played the Jets and they dominated the Jets and clinched the playoffs number one defense like Garrett was a significant right. uh, he he was favored over like Garrett was minus three hundred bear minus three hundred okay, there you go and, and what do you do you have the uh, do you have what Parsons and what were what closed next? Because last I saw, like Watt was like like north of four to one. I thought I don't have Parsons, but I want to say it was about seven to two. Okay, um, it was definitely Garrett and then Parsons, but Garrett was minus two eighty two ninety. Wow, really? Yeah, I'm surprised because again, like, but that that's a bit. I mean, the voters that I, and I talked to a lot of the voters because they the, they typically do the all pro voting and they mm-hmm. typically have awards voting as well. I mean, they. This is one. These awards, I would give the guys credit. I know people sometimes like laugh at the media for some of these awards. They actually like dig into stats and talk to people and watch football and pay attention. I mean, I just again, Miles Garrett, the first two months of the season was maybe the best player in the NFL, and then he wasn't anymore. So that's why I think that it's tough to win this award if down the stretch we're not seeing that same production. I, I hope Miles Garrett wins. That's all I'm going to be. I in. wish I could bet Watt right now. I didn't realize I. Did, well, know. I, I, I see. I, 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 he, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm naked on him. If TJ Watt wins, yeah. I will not, I will not be cash. I, I did, I did have a little, a, a little Parsons against the Garrett. Uh, so we'll go down to Coach of the Year now. This is a market that we we, we spent so much time talking about it, and and. and I think D'Amico Ryans will win the award, and he probably should win the award uh, after getting the Houston Texans to the playoffs. Like, but uh, yeah, I, I was kind of all over in this market all year long. I, 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 I bet some Tomlin like you did, Will. I bet uh, Shanahan at, at a good number before that Ravens game, and that that Ravens game destroyed the Shanahan ticket, destroyed the Purdy ticket, uh, and probably destroyed the the, the the McCaffrey MVP ticket as well. So, like. I didn't chase any more with this. Uh, I have a little bit of D'Amico Ryan's, like plus six fifty when they got off to an okay start, but but I, I, I don't have a ton here. I, I think Ryan's will win and should win. Don't you think, Will? I agree. It's interesting. Stefanski was like minus I don't know fifteen hundred yes. a, a week or two to play, but the fact that Ryan's the Jags collapsed, so that gave the Ryan that gave Ryan's uh, a chance to get in the playoffs, win the division. Remember they won on that Saturday night standalone game. Uh, the fact that look, they had the number one pick or number two pick in the draft last year, and you go to a division winner, that's a great narrative. A rookie coach, it's been a bad franchise. Plus, Stefanski won three or four years ago. He won during the COVID year, so all things being equal, they're not going to give it to the uh, same guy twice in four years. So I think Ryan's wins and wins a close vote, and boy, you could have gotten some nice prices on him with a, a week or two to go in the season. I think that's the lesson here, betting-wise, going forward. You can get some really good prices late in these seasons. Sammy, do you have anything anything here? I remember Stefanski being minus 900 yeah. after like week 17 or week 18. I can't remember exactly when it was, but he was almost a dime favorite to Will's point. And look, I, I think it's it's neck and neck. I think it should be a lot closer between Ryan's and Stefanski. Campbell's going to get some love too in Detroit, and he should. I mean, he took him to the NFC Championship game. Hell of a season there. I still think he's a moron in game, but there we he's going to get love. I was waiting. Um, I was waiting I for it. To, Sammy know, was, he was drop. way too nice. He was way to, too what's nice. Eight? What's three minus three, Jeff? <laughs> oh, zero. Oh, there you go. Um, you know, there's that analytics nerd. Um, the Browns did win a game this year with four different starting quarterbacks, and that's never been done for a team with 10 wins. And I think that's, I mean, four different starting quarterbacks you want a game with? That's That's crazy, guys. I think we're all going to continue the, the the Texans run of awards here. Like like C.J. Stroud will win, and sorry, Puka Nakua, you picked the wrong year to have an unbelievable rookie season with C.J. Stroud uh, leading the Texans to a, to a playoff berth and having the season that you did. So uh, Stroud close is a monster favorite, and he'll win defensive rookie of the year. I think is a debate. Like the only the only thing I feel strongly about is that if Jalen Carter wins, it's an absolute joke. The, the, they were the worst defense in the league for the last two months of the year. Uh, he did nothing in the defense. With, yeah. I don't think Carter should win the award at all. If you tell me Will Anderson wins, I'm fine with that. If you tell me Kobe Turner wins, I'm fine with that too. Uh, Sammy, do you have any uh, defensive player of the year tickets? Didn't make one bet, and I just I wish Witherspoon would have stayed healthy, but then he got he missed a couple games. He was never really the same. I thought he had a really good season early in the year, but you know going into that final week of the season, he was in the 50 to 60 to one range. 
it's a two horse race. Carter Anderson, I, I got nothing on it. Yeah, I think I think Anderson wins a close vote. Um, just because all the reasons we mentioned winning the division, the Philly defense was such a mess. So I think Anderson wins a, a close vote. It'd be hard to give it to Carter, wouldn't it? Oh, I think it'd be. I think it's almost impossible. It, it, like what, what, like uh, Jeff was just saying. Like Garrett had one sack in the last seven games, or whatever it was. Like you, you had your head buried in the sand if if you vote Carter n- number one. Like like I, I bet him before the year started, but uh, I'm not expecting to to cash that ticket at all, Jeff. Do we? I, I think when you look at the momentum of you mentioned D'Amico Ryan's coach of the year, C.J. Stroud offensive rookie of the year, it feels like the Texans mm-hmm. sort of route this, right? Like, all the momentum's moving that direction where you finish strong. Will Anderson was a little bit beat up, right? But he was able to, to finish the season mm-hmm. strong even, you know, in the limited snaps that, that he did play, if I recall right there. So, like, I just think Will Anderson will win this award based off of all the Texans love. Because there's no one else, right? Like, Kobe Turner's not win this award. Carter's not, I don't think. Why, shouldn't, why, why Should, shouldn't Kobe Turner win the award? You look, you look at his numbers compared to Anderson and they're better. I know, but the narrative of where he was drafted – all the Texans love. I don't think he's gonna. I think Anderson's gonna win this award. I would. I, I would agree. Although I think it, it might be. I'm fine. I'm fine with either of those guys. So, all right. Unfortunately, we can't bet. I, I, I wish I could bet this because I might. I might run out and bet a little. Uh, a, a little T.J. Watt after uh, Jeff tried. To I think. I think. Watt, I think that, mm. that number feels off. I might need to visit the book of Jeff anyway. We could we crush the. Uh, the awards during the year, and, and hopefully some of us will catch some uh, some nice tickets. Unfortunately, we won't. But that's it for the awards version of the Bear Bets Podcast Super Bowl Week. We'll be back with another episode tomorrow. And remember, for Sammy, for Will, for Jeff, I'm Bear. The less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>